Hey guys, it's that time again for my summer movie catch-up video part two. Now I'm going to talk about even more movies that I saw over the summer season, or more importantly, more recently. We've got a lot of big releases, some small releases, and I'm here to talk about them. So, with all that out of the way, let's get started. And if you haven't watched the first part, watch that before you watch this one, because... I like things being in order. So, anyway, <laughs> let's get started. First off, I want to talk about Sicario Day of the Soldado, the sequel to the acclaimed film Sicario from a few years back. And it has returning cast members, Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin, and it's written by the same guy, and it's alright. I was actually never a fan of the first one. I did like it, but I didn't go crazy over it like everybody else did. I just thought it was an alright movie, and honestly, that's how I feel about this one. It's an alright movie that is not as good as the first one. I think the first one had a lot to do with Denis Villeneuve playing or directing the film, but here the film just doesn't hit that stride. It's also kind of racist at points and has some weird stuff with talking about Muslims and Mexicans that I don't exactly agree with, but does that hurt the film entirely? Not really. The film is just, it feels like an unnecessary sequel, but it's an alright sequel with some good action scenes and some really good acting from the main cast. It's just not as fresh as the original Sicario. And so I'm going to give Sicario Day of the Soldado a 7 out of 10. Next we have a film that I saw a trailer for this earlier in the year and I finally got to see it and that's First Reformed, a weird, strange, and dark film from A24 and is directed and written by, I can't remember his name, but he wrote the screenplays for Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, and Last Temptation of Christ, so this is a guy I love. All those movies are fantastic, and he really shines right here through his directing and his writing. Ethan Hawke plays a priest of this small town church, and he's having a crisis of faith, and it delves into the psychology of the character, much like Taxi Driver, and he goes to some dark places. There's some really great scenes, and it's a very slow burn movie, but it's never boring to me. It's always fascinating. And the ending of the film won't go into spoilers or anything. It's just shocking, and I honestly love it, and it's just a fantastic ending. It might be one of my favorite endings of the year. I just really loved this movie. I loved the style. I didn't particularly care for the smaller aspect ratio that went with the film. It's more in full screen. I didn't care for that that much. It didn't do anything bad to the film, but it didn't add anything to the film. It just was a, a little bit of a, nu a nuisance, but... Anyway, it's a really good film with an incredibly great performance from Ethan Hawke, and I just really love this movie. So, I'm going to give First Reformed an 8 out of 10. Next, we have The Darkest Minds, a new YA novel adaptation about kids in a futuristic society that are put up into teams and they have to survive and it's like the Hunger Games, it's like Divergent, it's like the Maze Runner, except a little bit different, but there's nothing about this film that really distinguishes itself 
from the others. It feels like if the special kids from Stranger Things had a baby with Divergent and that's what you get. It's just a mess of a movie with some all right acting from the young adults. They're pretty good in the film for the material they're given, but other than that, this movie was just very dull and boring and just uninspired and just felt like a hundred other different things. It just, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. It's more just a bore fest. And that's honestly the worst type of movie to me. So I'm going to give The Darkest Minds a 5 out of 10. Next I'm going to talk about a film that came out earlier this year actually named Gringo. It's a comedy film with some actually really good actors in it, but it never shines at all. This movie was abysmal to watch. I mean, it's not the worst film I've seen all year, but it is incredibly just boring, and it's only an hour and 40 minutes, and it feels so long. I was, I couldn't wait for the movie to end because it just kept going and going, and that's the biggest problem. The pacing is just, it shits the bed. And then also, it's just not very funny at all. And that's a shame because you have some talented people here. They're not known for their comedy or anything. It's just bad, guys. Um, I can't really say much about it other than it's bad. Um, if you want to know sort of my feelings of it, I'd recommend seeing my buddy Gary's review of it at Mr. Garrison Reviews on YouTube. He goes into much more detail about it, and he, yeah, he drives it home that this movie's not very good. I don't know if I hate it as much as he does, but it's really bad, guys. And so I'm gonna give Gringo a 3 out of 10. Next, we're going to talk about a movie that I never thought I would be excited for at all, and that is Crazy Rich Asians. Guys, I absolutely loved this movie, and it's just so strange that it just kind of came out of nowhere. I saw trailers for it, but I was never really interested. And then, as it came closer to it coming out, I was ready to see it, and I was pleasantly surprised. I'm really not a rom-com kind of person, but I just found this movie so charming and likable with all the actors. Constance Wu is fantastic. She's just so likable of an actress and a character that you just really feel for her in every scene, and you're with her every step of the way. She's fantastic and brings such life to this movie. As well as Henry Golding, who plays the boyfriend character, he is so charming and so good in this movie. He's so likable. Everybody is just very likable in this film, and it's really strange that this came from the director of, like, G.I. Joe Retaliation and the Step Up movies. This is a very different movie altogether. It doesn't do anything different. Rom-coms have been the same way, I feel like, since the beginning of time, basically. But this movie is... It does those things that you've seen before, but it does them well. And it makes me not, like, be too harsh on it. There's also a character that a lot of people don't particularly like. They say that the film kind of slows down. I honestly understand it, but I kind of liked it all the same. I don't know. I just really <laughs> loved this movie, guys. And the cinematography is beautiful. Singapore has never looked prettier, and it just makes me want to go there. I love... How the movie looked there was just a soft color palette to it that I 
I loved, and I thought some of the comedy was really good, and just all the characters were so good. All the actors were great, especially the mother character. I can't remember her name, but she's fantastic. Is it really, like, a great rom-com film? There might be better, but... Honestly, there's none that have really hit me like this one did. This one was just a lot of fun, and I'm glad I saw this. It's probably one of my favorite films of the year. So, I'm gonna give Crazy Rich Asians an 8 out of 10. Ah, from a good movie to a bad movie, we're gonna talk about The Spy Who Dumped Me with Mila Kunis and... What's her face? I can't even remember her name. I absolutely just found this movie really annoying. I just found this film really annoying because of Kate McKinnon. That's her name. She was just insufferable. She's the worst thing about the movie because without her, the movie would it wouldn't be great, but it would be a little bit more tolerable. She just ruins every scene and she's not funny and really none of the jokes really work in the movie the one thing that does work strangely enough and you know i'm proud is that the action scenes are actually kind of engaging but the movie itself is not engaging it's very boring and just Kate McKinnon just ruins the movie. I'm, I know I'm repeating myself with this. I just can't stand her. I just feel like if you cut her out, the movie would be better. And it's sad that it's not better because I think this could have been a fun movie. There are some fun moments in it, but it's ruined. Anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time with this movie because I really didn't care. So, I'm going to give The Spy Who Dumped Me a 4 out of 10, just because of the action scenes. Next, we're going to talk about a film that I was really surprised by, and that is the movie Adrift, that I found incredibly just fascinating and really good. It's the story of a couple that are in the ocean during a hurricane and they basically become stranded and they have to learn to survive. This film has some really heart-wrenching moments and some very good acting that I think, I think this movie is very underrated and not enough people know about it. It's a very good film that I'm really glad I saw because I've seen some pretty terrible films recently, but this was a really good gem in the ruffle. This was, it just had really great acting and honestly a story that was very engaging. I usually sometimes don't like movies that take place in one setting. Um, sometimes they can be very interesting. Sometimes they do it the wrong way. And this always makes the film interesting. You're really wanting these characters to get out of this situation and when certain things happen it's heart-wrenching and overall Adrift is a fantastic movie it's tense and raw with some great performances and I'm really glad I saw it. I'm gonna give Adrift an 8 out of 10. Next we're gonna talk about Rampage the newish film from The Rock that is based on the video game, and, oh guys, this was a dumb movie. Um, it's not, like, completely god-awful or anything, but it's just not very great. It's very dumb, and The Rock is good at being an action star, but honestly, He's a, basically a scientist in this movie, and he's so unconvincing. He's got a likableness to him. That's just how The Rock is. 
and that's what makes the movie enjoyable from a human perspective. Some of the action with the monsters is really good, actually. I mean, it's nothing fantastic, but I had fun with the movie. It's just not a very deep film. And for video game movies, honestly, Tomb Raider was a much better film. I actually really liked Tomb Raider, and this is just not that interesting and not that good. It's got some sappy moments to try to have a connection with Rock and this ape, but you never really see them together in the movie early on very much, and it just feels like a forced relationship. Other than that, the film's just kind of forgettable. In fact, I'm kind of forgetting about it already, and I saw it only like a few days ago. But it's just okay, but it's not that great. I'm going to give Rampage a 5 out of 10. Next, we have the new Steven Soderbergh movie, Unsane, and man, this was a disappointment. I love Steven Soderbergh. He's made some really good films, but this, I don't know what he was thinking. There's some people that really like this film. I found this movie just really hard to watch, and yes, that is because of the way it's filmed. He filmed it on an iPhone. And, you know, kudos to him. There's plenty of movies that have made movies on an iPhone. I can think of the movie Tangerine. But the thing is, Tangerine looked like an actual film. They did things so differently in that movie and did things with lighting and different techniques to really make that look like a real feature film that wasn't filmed on an iPhone. But here, this movie just doesn't look very good. It's dull looking. It doesn't pop. Maybe you can say, like, that's not a complaint, but I think one of the biggest problems I had with the film was it was filmed in this particular way. It's so flat to look at and so dull. Also, I didn't find the story that interesting and rather kind of boring and it just got so annoying <sighs> I mean it's really crazy because like people have liked this film but I just couldn't get into this the acting is all right um the stalker character because the character in the film is supposedly being stalked by this person I found the stalker character rather interesting and the last 15 minutes were actually all right, but I don't know guys. I was really annoyed by the film and it's mostly because of the filmmaking. Steven Soderbergh has said that this is the future of film basically, that you can't tell the difference. Well Steven Soderbergh, I can tell the difference and I can tell it's being filmed on an iPhone. It just doesn't look like an actual film. I would compare this film to David Lynch's Inland Empire. He filmed that on a DSLR camera. It was standard definition, but I didn't care for that film, but at least that was an experiment. He made the movie as an experiment. Here, I think Steven Soderbergh was legitimately making a movie because he wanted to, and he thinks that you can't tell a difference. I can. And it's just really pretentious, and I really didn't care for it at all. It, I hated watching it. So, I'm going to give Unsane a 3 out of 10. Ah, next we're going to talk about The First Purge. I've never seen a Purge movie in my life. They don't interest me at all. And I finally sat down and watched this one, which is a prequel, and it's so bad. There's no reason for it existing. The movie is setting out to explain why the purge happened, and 
it doesn't delve much into detail other than we need to get rid of some of the lower class. And by doing that, they mean black people. Yeah, this film can be very racist, I feel like, because they're just killing black people. And I just found that awful. I mean, they could say that it's social commentary, but I don't think this writer is talented enough to be doing social commentary. This film was not very good at all. It was dull, boring, and just stupid. There's these guys that go around... Oh my gosh, there's this character in the film that's just a cartoon character. He's basically Satan just going around like killing people and he's a comic book villain he's so bad and the rest of the film is just really really just oh, bad nothing really redeemable about it and Marissa Tomei's in the movie and I'm just like why are you in this you're a better actor than this movie it's just a really bad film and really annoying too. I'm gonna give The First Purge a 3 out of 10. Next we're gonna talk about the remake Overboard, which I didn't find as bad as some people thought it was. It's definitely bad, but I think there is some likability with the main character I can't remember the actor's name at the time, but he's he's the rich guy. He's really good in the film, and he has some heartfelt moments that I feel are earned on his half. Anna Ferris, on the other hand, is really annoying. Her character is so unlikable, and the rest of the film is just not very funny at all. I've never seen the original film, but I would say that it's at least better than this one. It's just a dull film that's not very funny with some annoying bits to it, but it does have some heart to it, which means I can't really hate it that much. I mean, I guess you could say an Adam Sandler movie has some heart in it, but it's so cynical, and this movie really isn't cynical. It's just a bad movie, but one that I did have some moments of a little bit of an enjoyment. Anyway, I'm going to give Overboard a 4 out of 10. Next, let's talk about the Gabrielle Union film, Breaking In. I was really interested in this movie from the trailers. They just looked badass. I mean, I knew it probably wasn't going to be good, but it really wasn't that great. Um, it's basically just a... Lifetime movie put into theaters. Gabrielle Union is extremely good in this film and Definitely the best part. So is the villain in the film Billy Burke. I love Billy Burke in anything he's in He's great in the Twilight movies. Even if the Twilight movies aren't good. He's good in them He's really good in here and there honestly is some really tense set pieces and stuff in the film but the movie makes no sense, and there's a ton of plot holes in the film that make no sense whatsoever, but really, the shining moment is Gabrielle Union, who carries the film on her shoulders, but it's too bad that the film just isn't good enough for her to bring it to a home run. It's not that good. And honestly, really forgettable. And the trailer was a lot better than the movie. I'm going to give Breaking In a 4 out of 10. Next, we're going to talk about a film that came out way early this year. Midnight Sun. This is just another run-of-the-mill teen romance movie. Kind of in the vein of... Fault in Our Stars, except Fault in Our Stars is a much better movie. Um, we have this girl that is, basically, she can't go out in the sun, and so she has a relationship with this boyfriend, and they can only go out at night. And you know what's going to happen in this movie. 
there's no real surprises. But one thing that is surprising and really bumped the movie up for me is Ron Riggles. Or is it Rob Riggles? Either way, he is fantastic in this movie and gives a B-grade performance in a D movie. He's really good and sells... He sells these really heart-wrenching moments between daughter and father. He's incredible. And honestly, it makes me want to see him in more dramatic roles because I've only seen him in comedy films. But he's fantastic here. And the whole reason why I can't hate the film, because the rest of the film, it's not very good. It's every teen drama you've seen in your life. But it's that performance that is fantastic. Much like Breaking In, except for I did enjoy this movie a lot more. So I'm going to give Midnight Sun a 5 out of 10. Next I'm going to talk about one of the most hated films of this year, Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Honestly, I kind of enjoyed the film. It's not great by any means, and some jokes don't land, but it has a real sharpness and quickness to some of the jokes, and some of the jokes really do land, and I kind of just had a lot of fun just watching a dumb movie. It's really dumb, but there's nothing about it that I really hated. A lot of people will say that it's like, oh, it's not like the other Teen Titans. I'm like, well, of course it's not. It's satirical, and sometimes, yeah, it doesn't work. But sometimes it really does, and I found it quite enjoyable. Honestly, I don't think you're going to like this film if you don't like the show, but I found the film really enjoyable, and it had some clever moments in it with some jokes that I honestly did laugh at. There are some poop jokes in it, which I hate poop jokes, but there's only about four of them, and they're kind of one after the other, so, I mean, that's okay. Honestly, it's not a, an amazing film, but I didn't hate it. And I could give this a 6 out of 10, but I did like it enough, and it had enough funny moments to where I can give Teen Titans Go to the Movies a 7 out of 10. Yeah, hate me all you want. I saw Teen Titans Go to the Movies, and I liked it. And lastly... The next movie I want to talk about. This is the one I've been saving. I might spend a lot more time on this one. I saw Slender Man. And boy was this movie just terrible. I've never seen a movie this year that was this bad. Show Dogs was bad. But here's the thing about Show Dogs. It was an actual movie. With a Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 characters. They weren't great characters. It had a plot line. It looked like a movie. This doesn't look like a movie. This doesn't feel like a movie. And it's because this movie was cut to shit in the editing room before it was released. Basically, Act 1 is intact and... Act 2 and 3 are just cut, and there's basically no plot, and it can make the movie feel really, really long. Way longer than it is. It's only 90 minutes, but this made me notice that when a film has lost its structure and you don't know what's going on anymore, this film can feel incredibly longer than it is. So... We all know the story of Slender Man, and it's just told poorly. The actors in this movie don't give good performances at all. There's not a good performance in this movie. The film is ugly. 
it's mostly black and you can barely see some of the stuff that's on the screen at times. Nobody turns on a light in this movie. It's awful. It's an ugly, ugly film. And also, Slender Man is barely in the film. I shouldn't complain about that, but he doesn't have a presence in the film. There's never a moment where Slender Man steals the show. He's basically playing second fiddle to just teenage girls, and they're just really bad. Also, there's no main character in this film. There's three girls that they follow, and I feel like the movie was originally supposed to follow each girl at a different time and everything, and they all share the main character role, but I feel like so much was cut that that's no longer an issue. <laughs> this, just, there's no main character. There's no character at all. Um, it's not scary. In fact, it was laughable. I've never been in a theater where I've seen so many people leave the theater halfway through the film. And I've never been in a theater, especially a horror film, where people, the entire theater was laughing at the film. I wasn't the only one laughing at the film. My friends weren't the only ones laughing at the film. Everybody was laughing at this film. It was just so bad. And it comes from the director of I Know What You Did Last Summer, so of course, the mark of quality. And also, it's written by the guy that wrote Dahmer and Gacy. And yeah, mark of quality right there, too. It's, this is a bad movie. Joey King is in this film, and she was in good old Wish Upon last year, which was my favorite bad movie of last year. And this, honestly, is my favorite bad movie of this year. It's incredibly bad, and I honestly want to see all the stuff that was cut. When this movie comes out on Blu-ray, I hope it gets an extended cut, because I want to see all the stuff that was cut out of this film, because it feels like there's half a movie that was cut. The movie makes no sense whatsoever. Certain things just feel out of place, probably because there were scenes cut. It's just an incredible mess of a film, and I loved every minute of it. So, with all that said, I'm going to give Slender Man a one- out of 10. Congratulations, Slender Man. You've become my worst film of 2018, and you've gotten a 1 out of 10. This is the first 1 out of 10 I've given a movie this year, and it feels awful that I have to do that, but I'm... I mean, this movie was really bad, so it deserves it because it's not even a full movie. So yeah, guys, this was part two of my summer movie catch-up series that I'm doing, and I was originally going to end it with this, but I've seen several more movies, and there's a few more movies this week that are coming on digital that I want to see and talk about, so I'm going to make this another continuing series. I'm going to do a part three in a few days time and we'll finish up all these movies and I can get back to doing single reviews and not reviewing 15 movies in a review because this has been really fun but it is very exhausting. But anyway guys that's all I got to say for this. There was some really good movies that I saw, and it's, of course, some really bad films. But anyway, guys, with all that said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review.